हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम शगुन शर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस इन गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज फॉर गर्ल्स सेक्टर 42 चंडीगढ़ द पेपर इज फॉरेन पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया एंड मॉड्यूल इज इंडियाज रिलेशनशिप विद भूटान एंड मॉलडीव नेबरहुड हैज ऑलवेज बीन द टॉप प्रायोरिटी इन इंडियाज फॉरन पॉलिसी India always takes into consideration all the big and small neighbors while formulating its foreign policy. Though big states like China and Pakistan have considerable impact in India's policy, however, India cannot overrule the role of smaller nations like Bhutan and Maldives because to make regionalism a reality to make peace and stability in south asia india has to take all the neighboring states together so the possibility of smaller nations cannot be ruled out in peace and stability in this lesson an effort is made to understand india's relation with neighborhood in general and with smaller states in particular besides an in-depth analysis of bilateral ties with bhutan and maldives is made Moreover it is examined that how despite a symmetry in terms of demographic economic social geographic and developmental areas India has been successful in building goodwill and cooperation with these smaller states an effort is also made to examine how through warm ties with them India can prevent the role of outside powers to distract India's strong hold in south asia It is also examined that how India and these states can play positive role in multilateral diplomacy. Thus, an all-round understanding of relations between India and these states since independence is made. Relations with Bhutan: Historical perspective. Formal foreign ties between India and Bhutan were established in 1968 when former appointed its representatives in Thimphu. Earlier their relations were maintained by a political officer in Sikkim however basic framework of their relations have been governed by threefold historical treaties 1865 treaty of sinchula between the then british india and bhutan 1910 treaty of punarwa held between both states and finally 1949 treaty of friendship between independent india and bhutan Due to some differences between them India renewed this treaty in 2007 to consolidate their bilateral relations India Bhutan relations continue to remain warm and friendly during most of the time they are even sometimes classified in the category of ideal ties between a regional power and small states the reason of such strength has been multidimensional cooperation existence between the two states Their cooperation worked very smoothly due to closer understanding evolved between the political elites of both the states. Therefore, political understanding and developmental cooperation between them led to smooth sailing between both the states. Political understanding. Good relations between India and Bhutan developed due to second political elites of both the states. This understanding is reflected through their mutual regular visits to each other's country. This bilateral understanding between them was also reflected in each other's support at multilateral forums. India supported case of Bhutan's membership in the UN, NAM and SARC. Similarly, Bhutan was the only country which stood behind India at the time of signing of CTBT. It opposed CTBT to show its solidarity with India. Developmental cooperation. Bhutan owes its economic development largely supported by India. First two five year plans of Bhutan were totally supported by India. For 11th plan it reached to rupees 4500 crore. Thus throughout its period India's contribution to Bhutan's development has been tremendous. Besides its financial liabilities are increasing from one plan to another despite the fact now Bhutan is also getting assistance from numerous multilateral forums like UN, World Bank, Asian Development Bank etc. collaboration in the generation of electricity through hydro power project has been another area of cooperation between india and bhutan besides government of india also agreed to purchase 10000 megawatt of power from bhutan by 2020 thus india is not only helping bhutan in the production of hydro electricity but also ready to purchase the same 
India is also instrumental in building of different major infrastructural facilities in Bhutan. Development of rail routes from Bhutan to the border of India is also done by the latter. Since 2005, India is engaged in the building of railway tracks in Bhutan. The neighboring states of Assam and West Bengal of India are being linked through these railway networks between India and Bhutan. India is engaged in the development of five major railway tracks in this region. Thus, India is engaged in the overall development of this region and the smooth connectivity with India. Economic Collaborations India and Bhutan are also enhancing their economic collaborations through trade and assistance. As far as trade is concerned, India imports following commodities and services from Bhutan. Electricity, base metals, minerals, vegetables, oils, alcoholic beverages, chemicals, cement, timber, wooden products, cardamom, fruit products, potatoes, orange, apple, raw silk, plastic, rubber products, etc. Whereas India exports mainly following items to Bhutan, petroleum products, mineral products, base metals and articles, machinery, automobiles and spares, vegetables, nuts, spices, processed foods, animal products, chemicals, woods, plastic, rubber, etc. For the promotion of market of Bhutan, India provides it free passage to transit in third country. India has identified 16 entry exit points for Bhutan to facilitate transit to third country. Though in terms of figures, trade quantum is not much between India and Bhutan, yet it has been on constant increase. Thus, Bhutan is to a great extent dependent on its trade with India. Simultaneously, its landlocked status makes it inviolable for Bhutan to have trade and transit facility through India. Moreover, India has not only provided ample opportunities to Bhutan in terms of trade and transit facilities, but since 2009, it has also extended a standby credit facility of Rs 300 crores to help Bhutan to overcome its rupee liquidity crunch. Educational and Cultural Linkages To develop cultural and people-to-people -people contact, lots of educational facilities are extended to students of Bhutan in India. Among important concessions extended for this purpose include 85 students for undergraduate and 77 students for postgraduate levels. Every year are granted facilities to study in Indian universities institutions. Under Colombo plan, 80 persons are given training every year by ITEC TCS. 10 students from Bhutan are admitted in scenic schools in India. Nehru Wangchuk scholarship worth Rs 2 crores are given to Bhutan students every year. Ambassador scholarship worth Rs 2 crores are given to Bhutan students every year. Nearly 30 teachers from India are posted in college in Bhutan to teach students. Besides, number of private students in, is studying in different schools and colleges in India. To facilitate closer cultural ties, India has established its cultural center in 2010. Besides, India Bhutan Foundation has been established in 2003 to promote people-to-people -people understanding and contact. This forum provides platform to literary persons, cultural promoters and educationalists of both countries to exhibit and transfer cultural values of their respective people. Various seminars, conferences and concerts are being organized under the banner of IBF. This process is further strengthened through 37,000 people of Indian origin are living as residents workers in Bhutan. Besides, nearly 7,000 daily wages are also staying in Bhutan. Relations with Maldives India and Maldives had friendly and warm relations since 1965 when the latter got independence from British rule. However, India established its mission at Malay in 1972. Since both are proximate neighbors and Indian Ocean provides a sound linkage between the two. If Maldives is strategically important for India, then latter is pertinent for former in terms of economic and developmental concerns. Though both had close economic, social, polling, strategic and cultural relations, yet their bilateral relations can be understood by evaluating broad interactions between them in terms of their multifold relations. Political understanding India's political relations with Maldives are based on its foreign policy with the outside world in general and its attitude towards neighbors in particular. India is attracted towards Maldives for creating peace, stability and security in this region. Geographically, Maldives so 
close to India that whatever happens may have spillover impact in latter. Besides, happenings in Malay have serious bilateral, sub-regional and regional security implications for New Delhi. Even the happenings in Maldives and Sri Lanka not only affect their bilateral relations but also affect situation in India. Even at multilateral level, successes of SARC and IOR ARC is also dependent upon India's goodwill towards all the states of South Asia including Maldives. Even the success of new regional cooperation in the post-Cold War era is also dependent upon India's cooperation with all its neighbours. Similarly, India figures very prominently in the foreign policy orientations of Maldives. India is not only proximate but a regional power which can help Maldives through numerous ways. It not only guarantees its security needs from neighbours but also from outside powers. India can also prevent any kind of Sri Lanka intervention in Maldives. Besides bilateral concerns, Maldives sub-regional and regional problems can also be resolved through the help of India. These mutual compulsions of the two are reflected in past when India helped Maldives during its crisis situation. When in 1988, People Liberation's organization of Tamil Elam tried to overthrow the regime of President Gayoom, it was India who helped Maldives to save from the coup. In that incident, a People's Liberation Organization of Tamil Elam has been successful to take control of Malay airport and national capital. Then, on the request of President, India launched Operation Cactus and squashed the coup attempt and achieved full control of the country within hours. India's action was not only appreciated by powers like USA, USSR and UK, but also praised by neighbours like Nepal and Bangladesh. President Gayoom also thanked India for the timely support and assured warm ties in future. Similarly, during the time of natural catastrophe of tsunami in 2004, India was very prompt to extend general help to Maldives. It helped Maldives with all kinds of commodity and financial support to deal with that crisis. Even it helped repair the damaged infrastructure in that country. During the drinking water crisis of 2014, when Ireland's water treatment plant failed, India helped Maldives in such a swift manner that it was highly appreciated by all strata of society in Maldives. During this crisis, India took twin steps to help Maldives. On the other hand, it sends its heavy lift transporter plane C-17, Glowmaster 3 and IL-76 to carry huge load of mineral water bottles to Maldives. On the other hand, Indian Navy sends its ships like INS Sukhanya and INS Deepak which can produce fresh water using their onboard desalinization plants. Thus, the drinking water crisis was resolved through Indian help in a very smooth manner. The strengthening of their political ties is also reflected through the bilateral visits of leaders of both the countries from time to time. From Indian side, since the establishment of diplomatic relations, almost all the Prime Ministers of India had paid their visit to that country. Similarly, from Maldives side, Presidents Gayoom, Noshid and Yemiran visited India during their regimes. Besides, numerous ministers from both sides paid their visits at each other's capitals to strengthen friendly relations through signing of agreements of bilateral cooperation in different areas. Besides, bilateral cooperation both support each other at multilateral levels as well. This is reflected through their working in the forums like SARC, NAM, ARC, UN and Commonwealth etc. Economic cooperation. As far as economic cooperation is concerned, it is mostly India who has provided extensive help for the development of facilities in Maldives. India extended generous aid to Maldives for the development of infrastructure in that country. India was instrumental in building the Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital, Faculty for Engineering Technology and Faculty of Hospitality and Tourism Studies in Maldives. Through various academic collaboration, India is developing skills and educating students of Maldives. Important scholarship schemes are sponsored by India to educate students of Maldives. Some of them are ICCR scholarships, SARC Chair Fellowship, ITEC Training and Scholarship, Technical Cooperation Scheme of Colombo Plan and Medical Scholarship. Even India's Foreign Service Institute is providing training to Maldives diplomats and the professional course for foreign diplomat scheme. 
India's private companies like NIIT and Tripoli C is running extensive computer training programs for students of Maldives. From year 2011 to 2013, for approximately 27 months, India has been able to train nearly 3,000 students of Maldives. For the successful running of these schemes, India is also financing Maldives under Technology Adoption Program in Education. Besides capacity building scheme, India is also very liberal in extending grants and aids to Maldives. In terms of trade as well, both have made tremendous progress. India's major exports to Maldives are agricultural and poultry products, fruits, vegetables, sugar, rice, wheat, flour, spices, drugs, textiles, medicines, industrial and engineering goods, petroleum product, sand and aggregate cement, etc. Whereas Indian imports from Maldives are fish, scrap metal, etc. Thus, their trade, which started with modest beginning, has reached to the time of rupees 700 crores. But trade situation between two is not appropriate. It is because this has always been negatively in favor of Maldives. Even possibilities of diversification of trade also seem negligible. Besides, government, certain organization and private sector also engaged in economic activities in Maldives. Since 1974, State Bank of India is engaged in providing loans and assistance towards the promotion of marine products, development of islands for resorts and other business enterprises in that country. Even Taj Group of India is associated with the development of tourism in the state. It is running two resorts, Taj Exotica Resort and Spa and Vivanta Coral Reef Resort to provide good tourist destinations, outsiders attraction. Besides, Indian companies are also involved in the development of housing and industrial ventures in the state. Security concerns. Common security concerns among them are also another important areas of cooperation. Both the countries can contribute to the peace and stability in South Asia. Besides, in contemporary times, problems of terrorism has acquired global dimension for which cooperation and support both at regional and global levels are inevitable. In that context, activity in South Asia demands cooperation between the two states. Moreover, with the growing importance of economic factors in international politics, maritime security concerns in the Indian Ocean is another area where both can cooperate with each other. Beside above common concerns, both can help each other towards their bilateral security problem. If on the one hand, India can take care of Maldives security threats from the terrorist groups from Sri Lanka, then on the other hand, Maldives can help India by not promoting anti-India activities of China or any other outside power in the Indian Ocean region. Both states are serious in implementing such cooperation. This is reflected by efforts towards the evolution of trilateral framework of cooperation in the form of India-Sri Lanka-Maldives dialogue. Both also agree to strengthen cooperation to enhance maritime safety and security in the Indian Ocean region through joint patrolling and aerial and maritime surveillance, exchange of information, capacity building and the development of an effective legal framework against piracy. Besides, India is also providing training and capacity building of national police and defense forces of Maldives. In this context, India gifted a Trincat class fast attack craft to Maldives and installs radars on all 26 atolls for seamless coverage of approaching vessels and aircraft. Even India's Southern Naval Command has included Maldives in its security grid. Moreover, Maldives' military team was allowed to visit India's Tri Services Andaman Nicobar Command contender to learn the security and surveillance management of the critical island chain. Indian Coast Guard is also helping Maldives to manage its security concerns. Thus, both states at their bilateral, sub-regional and regional levels are developing convergence regarding security challenges faced by them. Cultural Ties both countries are engaged in promoting cultural ties between the two through institutional arrangement and enhanced people-to-people -people contact. As far as institutional setup is concerned, India has established its cultural center in Malay in July 2011 to promote music, yoga, classical dance, etc. between cultures of two states. 
India also did the restoration work of three historically important mosques in Maldives. Indian films and TV programs are also creating cultural affinity between the people of two states. For enhancing people to people contact, daily flights are operated by Air India. As a result, large number of Indians is choosing Maldives as their tourist destination. Even people in Maldives are frequently visiting India for pursuing higher education, medical treatment and of course as tourists. As a result, India is the second largest expatriate community with an approximate strength of 26,000. A large number of doctors, nurses, accountants, engineers, teachers working in Maldives are Indian. Thus, cultural linkages between the two are strengthening their long-term relationship. Problems and prospects. The relations between the two states were also not without differences. Though both countries have already demarcated their maritime boundary in an amicable manner in 1976, yet a mirror diplomatic problem aroused on this issue in 1982. It was because President Gayoom's brother declared Indian island Minikoy as part of the territory of Maldives. But before India could have reacted on the situation, Maldives realized its mistake and admitted that Minikoy island is part of Indian territory. Hence, nothing serious happened. Another crisis arose in their relation in 2012-13 due to cancellation of GMR's airport construction. The largest single Indian investment by the Maldives. India reacted to this decision in a harsh manner. It freezes its US dollar 25 million aid to Maldives. It also stopped the construction of police academy there and other infrastructural commitments were put off by India. Besides, India is also not happy with some anti-India sentiments of some coalitional partners of Wahid's government. India was also not happy with growing Chinese presence in Maldives. But now with the coming of Yameen's to power in November 2013 and his decision to visit India 1st to 4 January 2014 have resolved such misunderstanding between the two states. Given the proximate location and mutual interest of both the states, it is likely that both may be interested to establish peace and tranquility in South Asia. Besides, both may like to do away with threat of terrorism from their respective territories. Both may also be interested to have a safe and secure maritime communication. Even on issues of role of outside powers, both are against any kind of such interference. More than this, Maldives is to great extent dependent on India for its economic and infrastructural development. Therefore, they are bound to have warm and cordial bilateral ties in future as well. Thus, above situations reveal that India uh, have special kind of relationship with Bhutan and Maldives. Both the countries are small. So, the relationship of them with India is a kind of unilateral relationship where India provides grants and aids to these countries so that they can build up their infrastructure and develop their economy. However, the relationship is bilateral too, as these countries have always maintained peaceful and cordial relations with India. The relationship between India's neighbors and India is not only on economic level or security forums. The relationship is also maintained on cultural ties, on people to people contact with each other. So these small states are also equally important to India as other neighbors. Thank you.